This is a complex JSON. Cracking this JSON is quite difficult because instead of a square bracket to represent array of JSON tokens, there we have a curly braces. When there is a curly braces, this becomes extremely complex to crack the code and derive the values such as name, city and gender. Finally, we need to derive the values in this format. That means we are converting the JSON data to a data table to get all these required values. Don't worry, I am going to share this JSON token text file in the description. There is a link. Go to the link and download the JSON token. And then we are going to learn how easily we can manipulate this JSON string and derive that to a data table. You can store it in an Excel file or utilize the data table in any format. So let's see how this can be done. So the very first thing we will do, we will download this test JSON string from the link given in the description. This is how the file would appear. All right. So let's go back to studio and start designing. The very first activity that we would need is a read text file activity. So let's look for it. Read text file, drag and drop. And in this read text file, we are going to point it out to the test JSON file, which I have stored on my desktop. So let's look for desktop. Yes. And then select the JSON file and click on open. So now we have pointed out, we have to read the values and store it inside a variable. So let's create some variable. Uh, what should I name JSON input string? Okay, this should be fine. Hit on enter and click on okay. So we have got the variable. It is always important once the variable is created, go to the variable panel and see the data type. So by default, the data type is string. Okay, so it will read the string and keep it in a string variable. Now the next thing that we need is we have to import a namespace because we have to deal with JSON. So that is Newton soft dot JSON. Okay, so you can see Newton soft dot JSON got added simply by typing and selecting it will get added automatically. So this is the second step. Now the third step is we will drag and drop the assign activity. Drag and drop. And here the JSON string that we have read, we have to convert that to a JSON object. Okay. That is your third step. So first of all, let's create a variable JSON object. I am creating a variable. Go to the variable panel and here change the string value to J object. J object means JSON object. So browse for types and type J object. Simply type J object. You will get this. Select and click on OK. So we have created a JSON object. All right. Now let's see how do I convert the JSON input string to J object. So for that we will write a small expression. Let's click on this three dots and write the expression. So J object is the method. It is part of your Newton soft JSON link uh, class. So J object dot parse. Parse means what? We are converting the JSON string which is there in JSON input string variable okay this is the variable so this variable value which is there in a string will be converted to a json object okay like any data type we convert right the same way we are doing it for the json let's drag and drop the activity build data table so we need to identify this name city gender values right and put them into a data table so we need this build data table so let's hit on build data table and start creating three columns name Keep it a string and then city string. Okay. And the third one will be gender. Okay. These are the three values we need. Again, string, click on okay. All right. So all three columns have been created. Click on okay. Done. Now let's store the build data table output to a variable. Uh, let's create a variable dt1. That should be fine. So DT1, click on OK. So this is the variable which is going to hold the DT1, which is currently blank. Now go to the variable panel. We have to initialize the data table. Remember, 
you have to write new space data table why are you doing this because you will be dynamically entering the data table values into the dt1 in case you get an error object reference ensure you do this new data table okay so three things has been done now the next thing that we need is a for each so let's type for each drag and drop this activity okay okay so we have to understand few things here okay um, we have to understand few things so json object okay json object that we have created which is storing what this is storing entire value all these values are there now personal details is the key name which contains all these elements right these are the children's of parent person details okay person details children's 0 1 2 are the children values so what we will do uh, we will write a small expression um, right uh, so json object so the expression let's write uh, what we will do the json in uh, object contains the entire detail we we'll, uh, i have shown you that here i am going to say json object and then say person details person details contain the entire children okay so i am mentioning json object person details dot children okay so this is the expression that we have to write to fetch the children values 0 1 2 right all the children values we will fetch through this expression okay and after soon after you write this expression go to the type argument and change that to j property because it is a property of the json so these are the couple of syntaxes that you have to do as it is so j property and select the j property which is nothing but json property click on ok all right so these are the two settings for the for each loop expression and this one let's drag and drop an assign activity okay uh, in the assign activity i am going to um, i want to fetch the uh, each person details so every person has a name city uh, and the gender value right so i am creating a variable here each person details so those values right those values are called tokens okay json tokens so json property containing different json tokens so here i will say j token select j token all right so j token is the next data type we are learning j token so j token now you have a confusion right j look at this so all this this is a j token okay this entire thing is a, this is a j token this is a j token so these are three j tokens inside the children so these are three children's you can call it a children j token or children um now let's do write a small expression current item dot value so current item because current item is a for each loop right inside the for each loop current item dot value so what would happen it is going to pass uh, one one children value one one children value to current item and the current item dot value when we write it is going to pass it to each person detail so let's see that uh, with an example okay what is a j token what is that children i am talking about uh, so all this you will understand okay so let's use a message box okay it will be pretty clear just look at this message box one more message box also we will drag on the top on the top let me write current item so we are passing dot children you remember we are passing the dot children so what is the value in current item appears and then when you write current item dot value what is the value appears we have to make a difference what is a j token and what is a j property we have to make a difference okay so let's run it okay now look at this so this is the children value current item the first children value will appear so you can see the first children value has appeared so it is saying zero starting from zero until the curly braces ends okay uh, gender male yeah until there you know this is the current item value now the next value when you are saying current item dot value and passing it to each person details look at the difference now this one doesn't have zero it starts from the curly braces and ends with the curly braces. So this is a J token. This is a J token. It contains the value of the children. Getting it? It contains the value of the children. So similar way you can see the differences. Okay. This is the third J token. So J token contains the value of the children. Okay. Name, city, Bangalore. So these are the values. Uh, we will do one thing. 
put a message box okay uh, now in the message box if i have to fetch only the names so i will say each person details which is a j token variable and the name dot to string okay so done so this time when the loop runs it should pull rakesh mukesh and subham okay got it so i have deleted the previous message boxes just keeping this one let's run it so what would happen what are we expecting because we have written name it is going to fetch the first name the first value rak uh, no rakesh now it should fetch mukesh okay we got mukesh now it should come subham okay so all the three values we got it now let's use a multiple assign activity and uh, create name city gender three variables and this three are what string variables okay why i'm using a multiple assign activity because i can write uh, all the expression in one activity all are string type all right let's write the expression each person detail j token variable in bracket i will say name dot to string okay name this is what contains the key contains the value so i'll mention the key name name dot to string click on okay same way let's repeat it for city all you have to do replace the name with city okay now copy paste to the third assign activity gender and change the name from city to gender so that way it is going to fetch the values when the loop is running the j token values it is going to fetch click on okay all right now the next thing we will do add data row so this three variable containing the values right the first time the loop runs it will contain rakesh and its city and its gender so let's put put it in a dt1 data table 1 and then within curly braces we will mention all the three variables okay name city gender so curly braces and say name variable select the variable okay when it will appear at the bottom city to avoid any errors and then gender okay done so we are done so it is going to every time the loop runs it is going to add the value to data table one now we are inside a for each loop right we are inside a for each loop outside of this for each loop we are going to add the next activity to write the data table values to an excel so i'll use a write range activity write range and i'm using a workbook activity if you see drag and drop the write range outside of the for each loop okay once all the values are entered into dt1 we want to finally write it so outside of that let me drag and drop okay now let's write the workbook path uh now for the workbook path uh, what name shall we give create a very uh, not a variable let's give uh, within double quotes you have to write a name so i'll say final json uh to dt output okay data table output so any name you want to give and ensure you are writing the extension xl sx for your excel extension is uh, mandatory and then final output is the sheet name any name you can give i am giving final output and the data is there in dt1 okay so now uh, our workflow is almost done okay we will see how the output is coming okay build data table for each loop okay okay right range finally so everything is done now let's quickly run it and uh, okay all fine no errors right range activity completed let's go to the project tab and refresh it okay here you need to refresh because that excel file will get stored here so there is the file let's open that okay now you can see all the values have come but again there is no row right only values have come name city gender row is not there do you know what what is the mistake the mistake is in the right range enable the add headers 
that's it okay let's run it again okay looks fine let's open that file again and you can see name city gender um, you know all the all the uh, things have come all the headers have come and the value have come so that's about it guys thank you so much for watching